In this video, I do a get ready with me while I answer a subscriber's question. And then right afterwards, I take you with me to Austin, Texas, where my fiance surprised me with a weekend getaway. And we had so much fun. So stay tuned. <laughs> again with another video and this time i'm doing a get ready with me because it's my birthday weekend your girl just turned 24. my birthday was actually yesterday february 4th today is friday the 5th and my fiance is taking me on a little weekend excursion trip to austin and yeah that's where we're going and i'm about to get ready i'm showing you my cute little doggy <laughs> his bad self but he's so cute yeah, somebody commented on my last video. I think her name was like Alish, Alla. I don't know, her name was cool, that's all I know. And she asked a question about how do you stay motivated when you don't see results? And I thought that was a really good question because, you know, that's a good question. So let's get into it, I'm about to start my hair. But um, I think, really what helps me to stay motivated is just straight up becoming making myself obsessed over the goal like i get up so obsessed that there's no way i can continue life if i don't accomplish that and that that may sound weird but like i do it in so many ways like i become obsessed with it by living it and when I set a goal, one thing this really, like, really changed my life is, like, just knowing, like, so, so many things, so many things, so many things. But I guess I can start with, um, it started with affirmations. It was kind of an evolution, how, do I, how I got to a certain point on how I reached this method that I'm going to talk about. But um, it was basically that I would write my affirmations and I would say things like, I am this, I am enough. One of the biggest things that I think everybody should have is I am enough as I am. Because in that statement, there's so much power in that statement because I feel like a lot of people feel like they have these goals, but they're like, oh, something outside of me has to happen before I'm able to achieve that goal. And when you say I'm enough as I am, you're saying that, I already have everything I need in me to achieve that goal. If I have a desire to achieve that goal, it's already done. It's already in me. It's already capable of being done. And I just have to become so obsessed with it that I start living it. And that's the like the major key is when you when you make a goal, you have to live that goal. You can't just wish it happened and not do anything. You have to take action. You have to take action. Like you can't just wish on it. And there's so many ways you can take action. Like, the way I obsess over my goals is I always look at them. I make vision boards. I write down my goals. I journal. I journal out my goals. I write my weekly goals. I write my monthly goals. And I post them right next to my bed. So I see them every day, like every day before I go to bed and when I wake up in the morning. I become obsessed with it because it's everywhere around me. Like, if you're obsessed with getting in shape make your environment resemble somebody who's in shape like don't be like I want to be in shape say I am in shape or like if you come to a situation where your old self would have been doing something different in that situation you know that you are tempted to do something that you're used to and conditioned and have a habit of doing ask yourself what would my goal version of me do in this situation and you always know what it is. And so you just gotta do it. What would become so obsessed that there's no other option but, but to accomplish the goal, you know? Like, that's, once you make a goal, that becomes who you are. Like, if you want it to happen, it has to become who you are. It can't just be something that somebody comes and hands to you, like. <laughs> become so obsessed that you have to it has to become it has to come into your life like and when you don't see results 
change something never give up people who accomplish stuff accomplish it because not because they didn't fail not because they didn't mess up not because they didn't screw up things and have to start over but because they kept going you know they kept going they don't have to like they realize that oh they're doing something new they're doing something that's changing who they used to be it's not who they are anymore but in order to become that person that they are, they want to be, they have to get out of their comfort zone and be willing to be bad at things and be willing to fail at things. And failing isn't really a bad thing because you learn. It makes you, a, it builds character to fail. It builds character to go through trials and tribulations because like, and then sometimes people want things and really fast but they realize that if they get it fast you're gonna lose it fast it's just like when people win the lottery if they did if they were broke before they they're broke again pretty soon like they acquired that money fast they lost it fast they didn't know how to keep the money you know and when you do it slowly over time as you go through the trials and tribulations you learn how to keep your progress it's what it's that endurance that really helps you to be different than the next person it's it's being able to get back up after you failed that makes you successful because a failure is actually a step forward because now you know what not to do you know what you don't want to happen so I think and then when you're not seeing progress I say like give yourself time, but maybe you're just not seeing the progress. Maybe you're not noticing the progress because you haven't. I mean, it's just like when you see somebody every day that has been like losing weight or slowly changing, you're like, oh, they look the same. But then somebody else who knows them, who's only seen them like once a year is like, wow, you look so different. Like you're seeing every the thing every day. So like the small changes from day to day really aren't noticeable. But over time, over time, time, that's when you start to see the large, big changes. Like, if nothing happens overnight. And I think when you have a goal and you don't see progress, what you only see progress when you've been consistent. Consistency is key. Consistency is key. It's like when you're going towards a goal and you... And, Say, I mean, the person who commented commented on a fitness video, so I'm guessing they want body goals or whatever. So, when it comes to body goals, like <laughs> your body is a boat, and okay, your body is a river, and you, the person who controls your body and where it goes, what happens to it, things that are ingested, how it looks from the outside, is. The boat. Yeah, that's you. Whatever. So, upstream, upstream, where it's hard to get to, where it's going against who you really want to be, who you genuinely know your true self isn't, that's upstream. Because going upstream, when you swim upstream, it's hard. It doesn't, it goes against you. It doesn't feel good. It's like more harder than it has to be. But when you swim downstream, that's where you're your uh body goals healthy body whatever you want anything that you want anything positive that you want that really aligns with who you are on the inside and who your highest self is that's going to be downstream and when you are on a goal and you've been going upstream this whole time even though it may seem easy because the world makes it seem easy but inside you know that deep down it doesn't feel good to you whatever you're doing doesn't feel good in the long run it may give you like momentary pleasure, but it does nothing for you down the line and does not add value to your life, you know? And once you start going back downstream, if you keep going back, what I'm basically saying is if you keep going back and forth, you're not getting anywhere. I mean, going back and forth too many times will keep you in one place, but it takes time to be able to go back because a stream, if you want all the way down that stream, it's going to take so much longer for you to go retract where you came from and go right back to the other side, 
of the river. I think that was a really bad analogy. I hope y'all understood that. But basically, <laughs> it takes consistency. Okay, let's use the road, for example. If you're traveling from New York to Los Angeles, so if you drive five hours west and then change your mind and go back two hours east, you just added on another four hours to the trip. Like, <laughs> does that make sense? Like for y'all maths people, for my people that likes the numbers, that like, it, the numbers, do the numbers. And so that actually makes me think of writing down your goals. I mean, writing, oh no, writing down your goals, duh. But being specific and then starting a plan and then documenting your progress document the progress because when you're writing down where you were where you are and you keep doing it over time you'll start to notice patterns you'll start to notice things that you wouldn't have if you hadn't had that data right in front of your face to analyze and so writing down your progress also helps you to stay on track with your goals because like when you when you remind yourself every day about what your goal is by documenting your progress you come become a little more obsessed because like you're like Ooh, better watch what I eat because I want to make sure that my, you know, my measurements are lower than they were last week, you know, something like that. So you have to take action, become so obsessed that it's just who you are. Like that's just, at first it may seem alien, it's out of your comfort zone, but that's where you grow is outside your comfort zone. So definitely start writing stuff down and you'll notice write down i mean you can write down your measurements your weight write down how you feel because i think one thing about like your goal your body goals is how you feel because even if you don't see yourself losing weight you may feel more energy you may feel more energized to do stuff hang out with people stay up like actually have time to work on your side hustle or your side business like actually have time or energy to go on that walk outside enjoy some sunny weather like or i don't know people in the midwest it's still kind of cold up there <laughs> but down here in texas it's been pretty nice but like do stuff that makes you feel good don't do stuff that makes you feel like do stuff that will make you feel good now that's good for you also in the future it there's stuff out there that works. Some stuff makes you feel good now, but not, it won't do anything for you in the future. And once you know, like, I think with goals, as long as you know you're making progress, like, you don't want to turn back to the old way because you know where that goes. But as long as you're trying something different, if it doesn't work, try again and be creative. <laughs> if there's a will, there's a way, no question about it. So you just kind of make your way and everybody's way is not gonna work for you you can take tips from people like me i'm just giving you tips that work but like the way i go about my life you probably probably wouldn't work for you and the way you go about your life probably wouldn't work for me so you just gotta find what works for you and trust yourself stop trusting what everybody else says. stop trusting what your parents say i mean you can trust trust people whose situation you wouldn't mind being in if somebody if a crackhead comes up and gives me some life advice I'm just going to ignore it pretty much. But if somebody like Michelle Obama came out to me and told me that I should look into something, I would, I would, I would be like, okay, yes. She's an author, philanthropist, lawyer, freaking, I think she has a PhD. She's a lot. And that's somebody I admire. So that's somebody I would take advice from. And so I encourage you to do the same thing. Other ways I stay motivated is when I feel overwhelmed with like too many things to do, too much stuff, too many tasks. I, I feel like it's all jumbled in my brain. I don't know which is going to go first. And most of the time when my brain feels jumbled, the first thing I look around is at my surroundings and my home most of the time. And I'm like, oh, it's jumbled here. And I'm like, oh. While I'm distracted and procrastinating to doing these tasks, let me be productive and clean my environment. And when I straighten my environment, it really helps me to kind of straighten up my mind more and clean my clean my environment. It helps me clean up my mind. And then after I clean up my environment, I feel a little better. 
I feel more relaxed and at peace and less chaos around me. And then what really helps me to like make my scattered thoughts feel more straightened out is that I'll get a piece of paper and a pen and I'll write everything I feel like I need to do down. And then, am I the only one who is looking at this ponytail and thinking what the heck was I thinking? Anyways, I came to my sentence a little bit later in the video. <laughs> like numbers one two three four five six and then i go with the hardest one first just so i can get it out of the way and it'll probably take the longest amount of time but then it ends up always taking a lot less time than i than i think and the thing about writing and list out like in my head it's like magic because like in my head it seems like oh i'm never gonna get all this stuff done today there's not enough time in the day but you know me and beyonce got the same amount of hours in the day so better get to it <laughs> So, um, yes, I write out my to-do list. And when I write out my to-do list, like, everything gets done most of the time. And it's just magical. It works for me. It helps me to hold myself accountable. Be like, this is what I had in mind to do today. And the time that I write my to-do list is either, well, like, right before bed, I'll write, like, a draft of things that I can choose from, like, five to ten things. And then in the morning, I'll pick the top three and then they're usually like the hardest chunkiest tasks and I end up getting them all knocked out and usually can refer to my other to-do list or I'll just remember it in my head and knock those tasks out it makes me feel so much more productive I feel like I get so much more done that way and that makes me think again uh, one habit that I started doing my professor, he was my academic advisor as well. He was the guy I traveled to Kenya with in his church. And he was like, I used to always be like, I don't like any of classes, I'm tired. He'd be like, you know, Janae, the world doesn't operate like that. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm make my own schedule anyways. Which, it, both of those things are true. But we were both right. I made my I make my own schedule now, even though before I had classes. But now I make my own schedule and I decide to wake up earlier when I can. And like 5.30, I have an everyday alarm for 5.30, which sometimes I don't do that. <laughs> it depends on how I'm feeling. I like to wake up early because I feel like when I wake up early, I have a jump start on the day on everybody. Like, that's when I do my journaling, my meditating. I like to meditate that time because it's really peaceful and quiet in the morning. And I won't be interrupted. But yeah, when I wake up early, I feel so much more productive. I, get, I feel like I have, there's so much more time in the day. And I go to sleep at like 9.30, which is like an old lady, but who cares? My friends go to sleep at that time too. Well, most of them. So, that's cool with me. But lately, I've been taking my vitamins. I, I highly recommend, if you're not taking a multivitamin, take one. Because I know that this American, the average American diet does not have, get out of there. The average American diet does not have the correct amounts of nutrients and vitamins that we need. And I've noticed like, when I take my vitamins, my skin glows, like I feel so much like, my energy is way more sustained than it usually is. Like that afternoon slump where I feel like I'm tired after lunch because it happened. I don't eat nearly as much food. Like I get full so much faster, which is lovely. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. Like if you try to lose weight, I'm trying to answer this girl's question in all the ways possible, but it's making this process go really slow. Oh, but um. Yeah. Yes. For my deep, dark, lovely chocolate bear ladies. I was watching Jackie Ina's video. She puts a really red concealer underneath. And it works as like, it blocks out. Because I use banana powder, Sasha Buttercup banana powder. And it's really yellow. And this makes it like more neutral. It makes it like, like the flashbacks did not happen. And it looks so natural. Oh my God. I have not been using foundation because I feel like it makes me look too cake faced. And I'm going for like the natural beat, like the natural slay. And boy oh boy, this is like the best hack ever because I don't have that much makeup. But like, 
I don't wear makeup. I'm trying to wear makeup more often because I want to slay all day, every day. But <sighs> it's just a lot of work, guys. It's a lot of work. Okay, so I'm here on the voiceover because this video is getting really long. And this is just the makeup part. I cut a lot of this out, but like I said already, I really, or I don't know if I said it yet, but I really like to go for the natural look and minimal makeup, so I don't even use foundation. And I've just been trying to nail my 10 minute makeup routine because I'm about to start work here soon in April. And I wanna, I wanna put together when I go to work and not like a dust bunny. <laughs> So, yeah, this, I mean, this is really not a tutorial. This is just like a transformation because I honestly like to watch people do their makeup just to see the transformation, not really. I don't want to see their expensive high-end products that I do not want to buy for myself because I'm not about to buy it. But that's just not that type of video. I mean, sometimes people look for that, but this is not it. This is just me transforming into a cutie. And, I mean, I'm always a cutie, but, you know, just cute makeup on <laughs> so yeah guys i hope you enjoyed the video so far stay tuned all the way to the end to see a little vloggy vlog in austin texas i had to make sure i was still recording but i already wanted this part i figured i was about to just like end the video <laughs> i was about to end the video because i didn't have nothing else to say but then i realized it's also a get ready with me, so y'all probably want to see me also finish my makeup. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. And I guess I can talk about life and what it's like being 24. Life lessons. That does not look good. Things I wish I knew when I was 21. 21. I wish. I feel like right now I just realized how important spending time with yourself is and i was realized like it just uh, dawned on me that i used to have a, a subconscious belief that spending time with myself and working on myself was bad I, I don't know where it came from but it was real and i really felt that way like i'm realizing that like i need to do this like stuff for me or i look feel my best look my best like do what makes me feel good for myself and it's important because if the way you feel about yourself is how you like it really shows even like when you're with other people i want to be the best version of myself for myself first and then show up for other people just so i can like influence maybe like influence them but like encourage them to be their best self and it's a real thing like I wish I would have been better about my money, but who doesn't? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, I'm glad I'm still pretty young now. I'm glad to have learned the stuff I did about just like budgeting, investing in, in stocks, property, yourself, the most important one, yourself. <laughs> and just like making sure you have money for generations to come and how to set up avenues for money to flow to you let me put the microphone back in yeah i feel like now i feel like money is just a vibration and type of energy i feel like i used to think that i didn't deserve money or that i wasn't worthy of money and that's why i didn't have any <laughs> Like I'm finding out that's why I didn't have any or that's why I like wasn't earning any or making any and I'm finding out that it is possible to do what you love and be abundant in it and have an abundant prosperous life while doing it and it's fun like that's like it's amazing and I encourage everyone of y'all watching this video to do it and do it I know y'all saw that spec up glue on my eye this whole time i don't know are y'all like me like when that happens do y'all stare at it the whole video like when i watch other people's videos that's what i be doing and if they have something like that i cannot take my eye off it 
if y'all came here for, you know, uh, exotic, crazy birthday makeup, you in the wrong place because I'm not doing that anymore. I feel like when people feel like, okay, on brown skin colors, really bright, crazy colors, like look so weird to me unless they're very well done. But like when, when black people wear blue eyeshadow, he has blue hair. Have y'all seen that commercial? But um, <laughs> when they wear crazy colors, I think it looks so weird. Like wear natural makeup. Like you want it to accentuate your your beauty, not make you look crazy beauty. Like I don't know. I think it should makeup should make you look like yourself. Still, it shouldn't make you look like a completely different person. I mean, unless you really don't like how you look i think it should accentuate your features not completely covered up but don't let me be the judge do what you want to do boo but like <laughs> me what i'm going for is to look like flawless flawlessly beautiful i want it to be subtle subtle i don't want it to look completely different you know don't want it to look like me. These are uneven, and this bun is atrocious. It looks like a bra. Oh! Oh well. I like to do the top of my lashes with mascara because it makes it easier. It's like a coating between my lashes and the glue. It makes it less painful to rip them off at night. And tonight is going to be a wild night, I'm assuming. My friends, they bought me some Lake Click. Usually I drink wine, I'll have a glass, and then I'll go to sleep. But they bought me some whiskey. And you know what whiskey means. If you know, you know. Krista, Krista, if Krista watches this, um, I stole your last glue. I'm sorry, but I needed it. This is random, but it just popped in my head. But like when I'm filming videos, like I feel like when I talk, like it's so it sounds so just unappealing the first time that it comes out. But then y'all see the end product. I mean, obviously that's after it's been, you know, cut, clipped, cube nut. These lashes are straight. <laughs> Cause I wash them, but I love these lashes. They look so good. I like when they're very individual, like spiky and wispy. These ones are more spiky, but I like it. But they're short, like they're not like extra, extra. It is extra. I'm about to try to straighten or make these more even. But I know I might just make it hella thick. But I'm gonna try it anyway. I like this one because it's like straight. You know what I'm saying? And this one is like curved. And I'm gonna try to make it straighter on top. That's good enough. And for lashes. I definitely should have brushed these before they get on my eyeball. All right, guys, that's the video. That's just how my hair is gonna be, okay? Anybody got time? So, I'm done with my makeup. <laughs> and it's time to go, so. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. And comment down some advice that you have for 
some advice that you have for how you stay motivated even when you don't see progress all right guys if you made it to this part of the video comment the word birthday two words birthday suit in the comments and i'll shout you out in the next video and also the person who won the last i believe it was marquise marquise round of applause thank you you're the best my loyal subscribers the ones that watch my videos y'all mean the world to me and you're helping my dream come true so thank you peace My baby case gonna surprise me with a hotel. He's so I'm on the whole hotel. Yep. The whole place is ours. <laughs> but no. We in Austin, Texas. We about to go for straight shots and then pop bottles. Throw it on the bottles. I feel so much. <laughs> <laughs> I like this shirt, it's professional. I, I don't wear it often because it's like a party shirt, but it's so satisfying to go like this. I wish they had one that didn't promote alcoholism, but. No, you can't that shirt, but. Yeah. This is my party shirt. <laughs> it's party time. Party time. Party time. He's so cute. Yeah, I love this. I'm already stuck on the back. I already told him. <laughs> but yeah, this one, he did a better job of finding a hotel than I did for his birthday. Oh yeah! We ain't forget. Ain't nobody. We ain't forget Joel and Kyra. We ain't forget. What's good? What's good? Checking in on day two of the birthday extravaganza. So we are at the domain in Austin. Sorry, I can't even count my. We're at the domain in Austin. Uh, so it's a bunch of shops, a lot of fun stuff to do, bars, restaurants, all things around. So today we're going to walk around, do a little bit of shopping, go to Punch Bowl Social, probably do some bowling, drinking, then hit up some restaurants before we go to our nice dinner later. We'll tune you in to that. But yeah, that's the plan for today. It's day night or in our house. Dun, 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 dun. Right. Okay. But yeah, it's oh. cute in here. This crew I already see the white, the white the white people are staring at us, but I think they just uh, they think I'm bird or fool, so they don't want to come say hi and they think his name is Juan Hill and they want to come say hi. I don't pay attention to say I know. But I really did think that you were like, I thought these had to come with the property. <laughs> no. <laughs> I want, see, I want a waterfall like that in our house or like a fountain like this. We're gonna have a waterfall in our house. It's gonna be outside and you're gonna have, there's gonna be a big old glass window and you're gonna be able to see the waterfall from inside the house. Oh, okay, Theo got the pad to you. I don't know what this, I got the pad be my mole. <laughs> and we're at a Thai place and it looks delicious. What's up guys? So we have transition, we walk around, do a little bit of shopping. We got today an outfit for dinner tonight. Spend way more money on clothes than we should be at the time. But it's whatever we're gonna celebrate. Have a good time. So now we're eating, enjoying some Thai food. Today has I got I don't know. It's the pie B Bamo. B Babo Ma. Something like that. I gotta pass to you, this one of my favorites. Outside of Pantai. Yes, it looks so good. I've never had, it has like dumplings and like some ramen and like some miso. I'm excited. I'm not even gonna care. 
Do you remember our Colorado vlog? There was like 10 minutes of us eating. Oh, really? Wait, at the Robin place? Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Right I'll probably, probably be all kinds of places. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's good. What do you think? Very good. Yeah. It's probably healthier for you though. Yeah. 